reason John Dickinson is not a household name is really only because he refused to sign the Declaration of Independence. But Dickinson actually fulfilled a vitally important role. He had a vision for the country that nobody else had yet, a unified people with a constitution that would be amendable so that we would never need a revolution again. Dickinson has a message for us that is one of cohesion, unity, peace, civil discourse, not just about our institutions, but also in how we discourse with one another. These are lessons that we can learn today. John Dickinson was born in Talbot County on Maryland's eastern shore on November 2, 1732. His father, Samuel Dickinson, was a wealthy landowner, lawyer, and judge. Samuel was in the third generation of a family of tobacco planters who, with the help of slave labor, grew a prosperous business. Following the death of his first wife, Samuel remarried and had two sons, John and Philemon. In 1740, he and his wife Mary moved their family to Kent County, Delaware. It was here, at the Jones Neck Plantation adjacent to the river, that young John grew up. John Dickinson's ancestors came over initially as indentured servants on his father's side. And this is a testimony to what could be done in America, that a man could come over with nothing, having purchased his passage on credit, come over and then worked that credit off and then gotten some land of his own. And then his son, his grandson, great-grandson were able to accumulate more land and more property until John Dickinson was born and he inherited a large amount of land where he had multiple dwellings in Philadelphia and in Delaware. During his boyhood years, John would form a strong attachment to the wheat fields, rivers, and marshes of the family farm known as Home Place. Here in this serene setting, John received early training from his father. At the proper age, a formal tutor made visits to Home Place to provide young Dickinson with the kind of classical education that would serve as a great resource to him in later years. Like other young men of his social standing, John was sent abroad to study law. He sailed to England in 1753 and entered Middle Temple, part of the Inns of Court. Possessed of a conservative temperament and refined tastes, John used this experience to develop social connections that would last throughout his lifetime. Dickinson's time in law school was very important in a lot of ways. So he spent his, his time over there and then entered into the Delaware Assembly. He started out as just a member of the Assembly and within three months he had become Speaker of the Assembly. So a very quick rise. At the same time he began to establish a law practice in Philadelphia and made a name for himself very quickly in Philadelphia as a, a brilliant orator, very able barrister, and soon after that he entered into the Pennsylvania Assembly and immediately rose to be one of the leaders in it. It was in Philadelphia that he met and married Mary Norris. Mary was a Quaker, and her father, Isaac Norris Jr., was Speaker of the Pennsylvania Assembly. John's marriage to Mary, along with the property in Pennsylvania she brought to the Union, enabled him to strengthen his social and political ties in Philadelphia. 